approve item 93 by loop. Is there a second? Second by Watson. Are there any objections? Here, none. Item 93 has been approved. Council members, you go to item 91, authorizing the parish attorney's office to make an offer of a judgment pursuant to Louisiana Code of Civil Procedure, Article 970, amount of $5 million, inclusive of costs, interest, attorney's fees, and any other amount in the Andrika Williams et al. versus City of Baton Rouge et al. matter, appropriating $5 million from insurance reserve funds committed for claims and judgments for said purpose. This item may be discussed in executive session by Councilwoman Charna Banks, Councilwoman Erica Green, Councilwoman Don Collins Lewis, Councilman Lamont Cole, and Councilman Chandler Luke. Are there any public comments on item 91? Council members, the first comment from um, is from Joseph Piku on item 91. I oppose this settlement. Second comment is from Dwayne Blanc. This process should go through the court system until all facts can be considered. Although I feel great sorrow for the family, Mr. Sterling was at fault, resisting arrest and in possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Ashley, uh, can I have a point of order for a second, Scott? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I, I've read some of these comments and I think some of these comments are offensive when it comes to uh, talking about baby mamas, you know, I, I think, I understand things have to be written to the record, but I'm wondering if those are comments that have allowed that somebody can get a podium. I think that they're offensive and uh, I don't want to see them work out loud. I don't know how we handle that, but I'm just going to put that out there as my comment uh, in regards to some of the things that have been said and are being said about Mrs. Stone. Okay, Council, you broke up a good bit. I mean, I don't know. So you want some of the comments not being read? There are some comments that actually sent some of the comments earlier and some of the comments uh, had negative uh, remarks in them as it relates to uh, Mr. Sterling, uh, his mother and Mr. Sterling's children. And I think that those comments are offensive. And I think that if we had been in the chamber that they would not and should not still be allowed to be read into the record. I don't know how we get around it and Andy may be able to wait on eight wait in on this. But uh you know I can understand people in having opposition, but when it comes to demoralizing this family and talking about the children and other things, I, I, I think that that's offensive to the family. And I don't want to see it read into the record. But again, that's my comment and my feeling around some of the uh comment that I've been in to me. Councilwoman, I understand what your comments and believe me there's been times that each and some of the individuals on this council, and 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 my kid in particular, there have been comments towards that I didn't appreciate. So I understand we can ask Andy, but I'm not about to sit there and omit a comment or somebody because what's going to happen is I'm having a, a, exactly an example, just like Philip Lillard. We got to go back and we got to reconsider and hear everything again because somebody's comment is read. But I'm going to bring Andy if you can unmute Andy. Well, that's okay. You I mean, can, I I, that's my. I understand what you're saying. I, I, for the record, and so you know that's. Yeah, you know, I, I, I understand. Yeah. Okay. That's that's all. I, mean, I, I get it. If they're in, if they're here, yes, they would be. I would object to it. Them, you know, and keeping it civil and keeping it, you know. Right. But we're okay. kind of in a different where we're at. But I mean, Andy's on the line. If you want to ask Andy anything about it, uh, you can ask Andy real quick. Andy. Yes, I'm here. So she just talked about maybe some of the public comments, Andy, if you want to maybe answer any questions she may have. Yes, sir. So some comments, Andy, I've read prior to I actually asked you to send them, and some of them I think are offensive, and uh, the comments that are made to the mothers of, of the siblings of Alton Sterling, I just think that some of if we were in this room, would not be allowed, but if they have to be read to the record, I do understand. I just wanted to make that known publicly. I understand people have an opposition. I don't have a problem with that at all. But to relate to some of the things that they've said in the public comments to me are offensive. So you know, if they have to be read, I do understand. I just want to put that on the record. Yes, ma'am. And, and uh, we understand your position, but uh, according to the law, they have to be read in. They do. And, I, and I'm going to allow Courtney, who's done some recent research on this, to come in and chime in if there's anything else that needs to be said. But as far as everything that we've done, from my understanding, everything has to be read in. Yes, so ma'am. That's, that's fine. I, I can appreciate and respect that. But again, for the work, I want to make that known. And I understand, Donna, I mean, if we're in a public meeting. Mm -hmm. I know. I know it is different. But again, I, I appreciate it. So I, I respect the fact that they need to be read. So we can go on. I'm sorry. Thanks. It's got point of order. Um, 
Is there any way that we can make sure that whenever the comments that we keep it germane and if we're talking about Sterling and the uh, Alton Sterling specifically and are we able to to the, leave out the extraneous about the children? Yeah, we'll yeah. do the Ashley. I think you'll do the best you can, but from what I got you, I just want to. Yeah, I understand. I, I believe me. I I get it. I, I totally understand. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I'm okay. I, you know, I Don, I do understand what you're saying, and uh, we are in a different time. But this is a preview of what a trial would look like. Okay. And, um, yeah. and and it really will show a lot of the comments will uh as far as I'm concerned indicate the, the climate okay. and how people are. And I think all of America need to see what we're dealing with here in Baton Rouge. So I want to hear every last one of them. Okay, go ahead. I'm good. Let's go see if we can just move on and let's get yes. through the public comments. I think there's only about maybe thirty comments. Let's see if we can throw them in all here. right. I want people to see. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Council members, the next comment is from Philip Ellers. $5 million is a ludicrous amount of taxpayer money to waste on a convicted felon who was shot for failure to com comply with lawful order. Reject this sum. Linda Hudnell, I absolutely believe we as taxpayers do not owe one cent to the family of Alton Sterling. Janet Rodas, this is an atrocity to use tax dollars to fund this settlement. Wayne Martin, I vehemently oppose any monetary settlement outside the court system in the Sterling case. Ask yourself the question, how much money was Alton Sterling giving to his kids before his death? Does anybody think he would have the means or motivation to earn and provide a million dollars to each of his illegitimate kids? So should we enrich his attorneys and these kids because a combative felon in possession of a firearm resisting arrest was shot by a policeman thinking he might be killed if he failed to act as he did? Lynn Tucker, no way should $5 million be given. Who set that absurd figure? The lawyers, what is their percentage? Do not award bad behavior that resulted in death. Randall Cascio, this legal matter is no, I'm sorry, this legal matter is no longer a legal issue. Rather, it's just raw politics. There is no $5 million settlement recommendation from the parish attorney's office. If passed, the council should disband the parish attorney's office at the same meeting and let the council represent itself in future litigation. Let the legal experts do their job. Kimmer and John Penninger, as members of Dwight Hudson's District 9, we vehemently oppose settling this matter and request the matter go to trial so the public will have the opportunity to be involved. James Riley, the African-American community in East Baton Rouge Parish has been traumatized for generations. When Mr. Sterling was murdered, all we asked for was justice. What we received were excuses. His criminal records record was plastered across every media outlet <clears throat> while the identities and records of the officers were hidden. All the community asked for were answers. What did we receive? Excuses. Policies are just words on paper if they are not enforced. If there is no penalty, no retribution, the injustice that happened to Mr. Sterling could one day happen to me or my son. Mr. Sterling's life was taken. His children have nothing to hold on to but memories. You all have the opportunity to give them a better future, hope in the system that failed them, their father, and education that their father couldn't afford. They've waited long enough, and it's time to help this open wound begin the healing process. Jane Doe, I stand in support of parish attorney Andy Dotson. A $5 million payout to the Sterling family is excessive. I'm not saying that it was right for Alton Sterling to lose his life, but to give his family $5 million, if he would have pulled a gun and shot those two officers, we would, would we still be having this conversation? And what about what the other two officers that lost their lives and the one that will be disabled for the rest of his life from the shooting at Benny's car wash on airline? Those officers' families didn't get nearly as much, not even half, and they had families too. I think the Sterling family is just seeking dollar signs in their eyes, seeing dollar signs in their eyes. And didn't his son get arrested? I'm not going to read that. Um, I think that next section is not germane to the item. Um, my next question is, was his dad a good dad who took care of his children? Did he help them get ready for school, drop them off, pick them up, put a roof over their heads, put food on the table and clothes on their back? If selling bootleg DVDs paid for all of that, then I am in the wrong business. 
Are all of their mothers receiving welfare because he wasn't paying child support? And is that money honestly going towards the children? Whatever his children get, it should go into a trust fund for when they eat, reach the age of maturity, which I believe should be around 25 years old. Because if not, after attorney's fees are paid, there is going to be a huge shopping spree for expensive homes, cars, clothes, purses, etc. Last but not least, did anything happen to the caller who reported he was selling the DVDs at the convenience store? If the owner had no problem with it, then why did the caller? If the caller wouldn't have made that dreadful and fatal call, then maybe everyone would still be here today. Stephen Merritt. One, Sterling had already threatened a person with a gun the night he was killed. This is why the officers were responding. Two, he was engaged in illegal activities, selling of pirated CDs, threatening a customer of the convenience store earlier in the night with a firearm and illegally carrying a stolen firearm. He was resisting arrest and attempting to pull a firearm to cause bodily harm to the officers. Four, he was on numerous prescription drugs and illegal drugs, all of which could affect his behavior. Number five, he had already served jail time for resisting arrest and trying to shoot a sheriff's deputy on Rosenwald Road at another convenience store. Amy Rodrigue. I am in support of the Alton Sterling settlement of $5 million for wrongful death. Arthur Toller, Mr. Sterling was a convicted felon in possession of a concealed handgun, the same offense for which he was recently released from prison. He resisted arrest and died from his own actions. The taxpayer money would be much better spent on the poor of this parish. Donna Calliott. Alton Sterling was a career criminal and known for years of standing around at night selling artist copyrighted CDs. The owner of the store, the customers, as well as Alton Sterling knew it was illegal. If police officers knew, it should have been stopped when it first started. He was in commission of a crime, had illegal drugs in his system, an active warrant for his arrest, had a gun on him, and was on parole. He did not come forward to turn himself in and was taking cash. He had multiple baby mamas and was not supporting any of them. Has DNA been done on all of the children? His death directly caused the death of seven great officers. One will never learn what a normal life is, and the policeman who fired the shot wasn't charged. Shouldn't have been charged, but his life is ruined. He did his job and prevented his own death by acting as he was trained. The older child, who's 18, was a visitor of the White House recently. We have already been supporting his children, but to make them each millionaires due to their father's criminal behavior is a slap in the face to Bountner's taxpayers. I, along with the other residents of the neighborhood, taxed off duty patrolmen so that our policemen and women can work higher crime areas and officers can work extra as they aren't paid a livable wage. There should be, they should be the millionaires. We shouldn't reward criminal behavior. Concerning the money, how much of it is designated to go to the child? How much of it is going to the artist who's copyrighted merchandise Mr. Alton stole and sold and stole? They were denied what they were right was rightfully theirs. How much of the sales will be taxed locally, state, as well as federally? How much of the money will go back to the entitlement programs that his children and baby mamas receive? The money should be returned. How much in collections from other sources did this group of related people get? If there's a settlement, which as a taxpayer, I am saying that none is due. I am, however, asking that all of the above considered, please say no. Already his oldest son is starting in a criminal path. Stacy Watts. I feel the $5 million settlement is fair to the family and punitive for the department who should have never hired Salamone. Who hires someone for such a respected position without a thorough background check? There was negligence on the part of the police department and unfortunately led to Alton Sterling's unfortunate death. People need to understand that they aren't judges, jurors, and executioners. This would send a strong message to police. Lee Johnson, the amount is excessive and inappropriate. Public funds should not be rewarding criminal behavior. Um, Aaron Ardwan, my name is Aaron Ardwan, and I support yes in favor of Sterling settlement. Very important in this election year to show whose side our politicians are really on. Uh, DeQuincy Glenn, the Alton Sterling settlement is on the agenda. The case needs to be settled for no less than $5 million. Jason, uh, I'm sorry, Jameson Alston, please vote in favor. Pay the settlement to Alton Sterling's family. Keith Richard, I oppose settlement with the Sterling family and believe that this matter should proceed to trial by either a judge or jury. It should not be decided by the Metro Council and certainly not without more public comment. Um, Judy Collins, zero dollars should be given to the Sterling family for his death. A 
A criminal resisting arrest doesn't deserve to be killed, but his family doesn't deserve compensation for his death either, as he was breaking the law. George Jacobs, a criminal should never be paid. He had a gun. You all need to walk in a LEO shoes and take a shoot, don't shoot horse. Wayne Anderson, he resisted arrest, had a weapon, and his family should be paying Baton Rouge money instead of the possibility of taxpayers having to pay for this criminal. Nicole C. Davis is against the settlement. Concludes the comments on item 91. Okay, council members, that closes the public comments. Any discussion? Anybody up to bat first? Hello. Anybody? Yes, sir, I'll go first. I'm sorry. I said, yeah, I'll go first. Okay, Lamont, go ahead, sir. Well, first and foremost, good evening, and I'd like to thank everyone for uh, participating in this uh, important conversation. Thank you, Scott, for taking the item uh, early in our agenda. I think we've been dealing with this now for four years, and I think it's time for us to move forward. Uh, no matter what decision we make tonight, uh, none of us are going to be 100% satisfied with the decision that is made. But I do think we can all agree uh, we are ready to move forward, uh, put this behind us, and begin a process of healing what has played and what has been hanging over our head for the past four years as it relates to uh, this particular issue. Uh, there were many mistakes made on the evening of July 5th or the morning of July 5th, 2016. And until we acknowledge those mistakes or begin to acknowledge them in a way uh, where people can begin to feel good about uh, how we go about doing the business of this city, uh, we're gonna continue to have problems and we're gonna continue to see uh, issues arise around race, issues arise around crime, issues arise around how we go about doing things. And so. I'm just ready to see us move forward. I personally think when we look at the numbers of cases around the country and wrongful death uh, incidents all over the nation, uh, the numbers range based on uh, the particular situation as it relates to the comments of whether or not uh, the officer use a proper police procedure. I think all of us know football tackling an individual who is not a threat to you is not proper uh, police procedure. and many many things may have occurred that evening but that is the one immediate incident that led to some of the struggle uh when the office of football tackled out and so we have to be very honest about that as we might take a side but when we look at that situation objectively we recognize that if we were one of us in the same situation who were not posing an actual threat and we were football tackled we'd all feel uh that we were wronged in terms of how police handled us using policy and procedure so with that being said, I don't want to take up too much time. I'm in favor of the item, and I move uh, we settle the case for $5 million. Councilman, you making a motion to approve yes, item 93? I mean, I'm sorry, item 91? Yes, sir. Motion by Cole. Is there a second? Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Banks. There are, I'm sure I don't know there are objections. I object. There are other objections. We'll do a roll call. Any other speakers? Council members, any other speakers? Um, I'll, I'll go. Councilwoman Collins Lewis. Okay, so um, I, I agree with the comments that Lamont made. Um, I also uh, think that people that are making certain comments, first of all, should not be referring to them as baby mamas. That's not a proper term. I don't think you refer to it as someone else. To me, that's a term that's uh, pretty much racial in its tone about baby mamas. If they were uh, the mothers of autism and children, if they were illegitimate or not illegitimate, uh, they are still the children. Uh, I think that when people, or if people go back and look at the video from the night that this happened, uh, Officer Howard Wade had the situation to seem to be under control with autism uh, complying and to me, the uh, scene exploded when Lane Salamone arrived on the scene with his methods, his tactics, and his procedure to try. Uh, I don't know what he was doing, but it was not proper police protocol. It's been said once before that he should never have been on the police department. He had a criminal record that was never revealed. I don't hear anybody talking about anything about his past criminal history 
about the record that he may have had uh, before he got to the police court that has never been mentioned, but it is well known. The tactics he used would not have been uh, made known, were not proper procedure for a veteran's police officer. And so all those things have to be taken into consideration. Uh, again, we have been dealing with this for, I don't know how long, I just think it's incumbent upon this council to resolve this. Uh, I am in agreement with the settlement for the five million. And uh, I admit that the uh, motion that I will be second, but I will cover the motion. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Councilwoman Banks, you may put on your mic. You unmute okay, your I have a question for Andy. Andy? Yes. Are you there, Andy? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, I have a copy of the police union contract. And under Article 21, it says, um, let's see, I know we've talked a lot about the cap. It says that the city of Baton Rouge shall provide a legal defense and indemnity, indemnify any officer who is, who is sued in connection with activities occurring during the course and scope of his employment. So does that mean that the city is on the hook for, if there's an judgment against Salamone and um, Harley and R, does that mean that the city is responsible for paying that judgment? That's a yes or no. Ask that question again, because I, I thought I heard something different. From the contract, that provision of the contract, what's your question, Councilwoman? With, does that mean that the city is on the hook for paying um, paying the paying the judgment? Yeah. It's it's not a yes or no, it's not a yes or no question, ma'am. It's not because we are still in litigation, and it has not been determined yet whether that is applicable or whether that will be called into play or whether that will be applicable. In any way, listen to the question. Listen to the question. The contract says the city of Baton Rouge shall provide a legal defense and indemnity indemnify any officer who is sued in connection with activities occurring during the course and scope of his employment. So the question is, based on what this wording says, does it mean that if there is an officer and there is a case where there is a judgment, is the city on the hook to pay that? My answer has not changed. That's what that document says, but it's uncertain as to the applicability of that provision. That's still part of the litigation. What would be some, for what for what case? Because I'm just talking in general. In any case, and specifically in this case, it's uncertain. Each okay. case is different, but in this case, it's uncertain. So let me ask you this. Who is providing the legal defense, since we want to be in specific, talk specific, for uh, uh, Howie Lake and Blaine Salamone. Who is paying that legal defense? The city, right parish, the city parish at the, at the conception of the litigation made the choice to hire outside counsel, conflict counsel for Mr. Salamone and Mr. Lake. And at this time, the city parish is paying those bills because those are uh, outside conflict counsel. Okay. So since this says and, that alone says that there it also, because it is a contract, and I'm sure when this, settle, if we settle for $20 million, go to trial, settle for $20 million, then this is the contract part that the, their counsel is going to bring up. So that's why I'm at, and the, see, the fact that we paid, we're paying for the legal defense, and that's what this Article 21 says, and indemnity, then based on every lawyer that I have asked about this other than you have said 100% the city will be liable based on this statement. So if there, if you're saying that's not the case, name one um, situation on how it's possible that the court would not apply this. Number one, Councilwoman, 
I don't know who you asked that to. I don't know who that lawyer is or what experience they have. But my answer has not changed. Listen it's to the question. Listen to the question. Councilwoman, what? I can only I can answer it as as I can answer it. And the way I'm answering it is tell me the question, but you're not Andy, you're not listening. I'm not asking that anymore. I'm asking a new question. That's why I'm saying you don't listen. What I asked you got twenty you got twenty seconds left. You're gonna want your additional time. You're taking up too much of my time. What I'm asking is what would be one of those situations by which the court would not apply this written signed contract councilwoman you want your additional five minutes yes councilwoman you're asking me to get into hypothetical situations and i'm not going to do that especially now with this okay. Yeah. What, okay so let me just make the statement because that's how it always is when you ask a question you can't answer but then when you then you give unsolicited wrong advice so what i'm saying to you council members is that don't let us get in a situation because there's this contract that the that and we don't know the psychological which from what i understand is is horrible regarding us uh, blaine salamone we're going to end up with a 20 million dollar lawsuit just based on this indemnity and that is what we're dealing with we're not Alton Sterling is not on trial. If he was on trial, he would probably be here today. He did not get the benefit of the trial. Who's on trial are the lawyers. I'm sorry. Are the um are the police officers? We're talking about five children who for four years, they are now twins, six years old, an eight-year-old, a 12 and an 18-year-old. Four years ago, they were minors. I understand a lot of people want to make go to go to trial and make it a spectator sport. I understand that we have gone back to the time where a black American was three fifths of a person, but we are trying to heal our community. We're trying to give these children a chance that they haven't had um, before. All the comments that people make about this man and this year, they don't know. And we have to just stop doing what the Bible said, being accusers of the brethren. There, I, I suspect there's no one that could not have done something to cause you possibly to go to jail if you've been caught. But we're living also in a time where we know that people are, are, are uh, especially because we never questioned the police before. You can have an entire record that, not, that may not have been true. Because we always believe what the officer said. Uh, the, the other, the last comment is, Alton Sterling had not had an uh, a situation with the police since June twenty first, twenty fifteen, five years, and that was a uh, resisting and distributing supposedly. But in all these cases, we're finding out the police officers don't always tell the truth. You gonna, you could get, and everywhere where he had. Possession of marijuana right now, that would have been, that's not even an arrest anymore. So we have to deal with what is going on today. What were the actions of the police officer? He is the only one that on trial. Anyone who's ever lost a relative, who's ever been killed, can tell you people are going to blame the victim. If anyone on this council has ever had any tragic thing happen to them outside, people are going to say what they could have done to change that. And there are no exceptions on this council to that. So I'm asking my council to allow our, our us to have restorative justice, allow these children to be able to have a better life than their father had. And let's show everyone that we are trying to come together as a better council and that we don't ever want to come this way again, where we have this kind of trauma brought into our community and no other family and no other community have to face these protests that we've had to do. So I'm just asking my council to please um, vote that we settle this for $5 million today. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Councilwoman Green, did you want to speak? No. Councilwoman Rocca? You unmuted? Councilwoman? Yes. I Sorry, my computer froze. My apologies. There you so, go. 
as everyone here knows, but so the public is aware I am, I am new, so I didn't get the privilege of sitting through all the previous executive sessions. But based upon the public comments that I just heard and listened to, I find it extremely alarming after all of this time. We still don't know what the actual issues are in this case. And it appears that Miss Watts was maybe the only one that even came close to talking about what the issue is. And that's basically negligent hiring and firing. All the other issues um, aren't been, they, they don't, are not relative at this point. I do have a question for Greg Rome or Andy Dotson. Um, to get this matter out of the way, uh, can somebody please tell me about minority settlements? And by minority, I don't mean black or white. I mean minor, minor children. Can somebody please tell me, um, are you guys there? Can you answer my question? You on? Yes, sir, I'm here. Go ahead, Councilwoman. With regard to the children in this case, can you explain to this council and to the public what a minority settlement is? Yeah, essentially, uh, a minor is not able to come into possession of any amount of money that they would be entitled to uh, in a judgment or a settlement or anything of that nature. Uh, what would have to happen is uh, the attorneys for the particular child would have to go uh, before a judge and have a judge agree uh, that the settlement is to the benefit of the minor and that they have a plan in place, uh, a trust or some other uh, method by which they ensure that that money goes to the benefit of the child. And in between the time that the child attains the necessary age uh, and today, any money that's taken out of that child's account has to be for the benefit of the child, whether it be for schooling, for a vehicle, and must be only done by the consent of the judge and not just merely by the consent of the person who has authority over that child. That's the, that's the uh, cliff notes of what a minority settlement is. Thank you so much. I appreciate that clarity. So no shopping sprees for the mothers. Next um, question that I have is, can you please walk me through the settlement process? You mean if this matter passes? No, I'm meaning today. Can you walk me through I mean, the if, settlement? If this, if this matter passes today. Yes, oh, so can, can we settle this matter today? Can we vote on the settlement? Is that possible? I mean, the council has the authority to do whatever the council to, to have, you know, wants to do. Uh, I hold on. We're not violating a statute by voting on this today. I'm not aware of what statute you're referring to, Councilwoman. So, Andy, are you um in support of us passing this? Are you saying that you recommend the five million dollar settlement? I, I think I've made clear to everyone that I think we're in litigation and litigation needs to proceed. And you know, I think that a settlement is warranted. But, you know, we have not been consulted in any way as to whether or not $5 million is the appropriate amount for the settlement in my office. I agree with you. Um, can I talk to Greg Rome? Is Greg Rome on the phone? He's had a litigation, right? Greg, are you on the line? I know yes, my sir. time is up, but he refused to meet with us. Well, Council Walker, she got the floor. I appreciate it. Sorry. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm here. He's on, he's on the line. Just to be clear, who, who refused to vote with you, Councilwoman? I called Andy. I called Andy. I, I emailed Andy asking him to meet with me and the co-authors on this case so we could talk about how to get to the settlement. And he flat out refused and said I could have it, but he would not be there. I, you know, I asked him, I said, you are our county. He told me I was one of 12 that I don't have to, he didn't have to just meet with me. I think um, Councilman Luke tried to meet with him. He okay. refused him as well. Thank you. Okay. I have some questions for Mr. Roman. I don't want to use up all my time just yet because I do have further you got, you got thirty seconds. You got 30 seconds. Let me know if you want your second five minutes. Mr. Rome, can you tell me about settlements and whether or not this is the due process for that? Well, I wouldn't consider this to be a settlement. Uh, if you look at the agenda, and I know people keep using the word settlement. This is an offer of judgment. This is a judgment against the city. If you want to settle a case in excess of $10,000, you have to look at revised statute 13 colon 5109, specifically subsection C, which does require the advice and concurrence of the parish attorney's office. And we do that by claims review, which is by resolution, the claims review process. 
So that's that's not what you that's not what you have here. Mr. Uh, look, hold one second, Jen. You want your five minutes? Yes, sir. Please. Okay. If you look at item ninety one specifically, it says authorizing the parish attorney's office to make an offer of judgment. You do not see the word settlement anywhere in that agenda item. And I'm not picking on Councilwoman Banks, uh, Councilwoman Collins Lewis, or Councilman Cole. I've worked with all of them. I know them to be very smart. I've helped them in their district on issues. This is not a settlement. This is a judgment against the city. So you need to be very careful. If, if it was a settlement, I could tell you, you probably didn't follow the procedure. This is an offer of judgment. If it passes, then I, it's my opinion that it'll be subject to the judgment payment policy. And that's something totally separate. I don't want to take up a bunch of time because you asked me about a settlement question. My opinion is this is not a settlement, ladies and gentlemen. And I, I understand everybody that had a comment referred to a settlement because they didn't read your agenda item. All those people that commented did not read your agenda item. This is an offer of judgment against the city it's not a settlement so where are we at are we are we doing things properly are we in it, line with what we're supposed to be doing if you were to pass this item my the, the way i've always handled it for us to pay a judgment our office then has to make a recommendation to the council or whether or not y'all should pay this judgment. I haven't discussed this with Mr. Dodson because this isn't our item. So if y'all pass this item, I'm sure he's going to talk to me. We're going to bring it up at claims review and decide if it's going to be our office's recommendation that we make this offer of judgment. Because once this is accepted, it's a judgment against the city. So you could pass whatever you want. This is not a settlement item. This is an, I keep saying it, but this is an offer of a judgment. So you got to be very careful about what you're doing. So yet again, another misunderstanding, correct? I don't know if it's a misunderstanding. You were the only person that came to, to ask me about it. So, and, and I, and I, I, I believe Councilwoman Banks, if, if nobody would talk to her, I don't remember her calling me. If she did, I apologize for not speaking to her in advance. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right. You got two. You got two minutes left. Two and a half minutes. Jen, you finished or council? I would just like to say a settlement on this case may provide, or an offer of judgment may provide some cl closure, and I think that it would be helpful. But I also believe that it's a band aid. Um, I believe that there are some deeper issues. There are some departmental failures, and if we settle this case, we'll never be able to see those departmental failures. Um, but I also believe that everyone had a duty to research this over the course of the four years that they were reviewing it. Um, I come in late. I've tried to do my homework. There are some serious issues. There are serious legal questions, questions of law that need to be answered. I don't know if we are at if we can do that here. I'm not I'm not convinced yet. Thank you. Council members, any other any other discussion? Anyone else? Councilwoman Green? Um, I just very briefly, I just, um, if, if Mr. Rome can come back to the phone, I just happened to pull up the, the CODA article he just referenced, and I want to make sure I understand as well. You there, Greg? Um, sir. Yes, sir. Are you, Councilwoman Green, are you talking about? Code of Civil Procedure Article 9. You said Article 13, 5, 1 on 9, correct? Yeah, concerning That's settlement. That's the one you referenced, right? Paragraph C, yes. Okay, so you're in Paragraph C. Because when I yes. started reading, first, the question was about, from uh, my colleague, the question was about, are we doing this the proper way? Is it your statement that the proper way would be judgment, then recommendation? No, I'm not. I'm, I got asked. I thought I got asked a question concerning: Are we doing a settlement a proper way? I don't think this well, is a settlement, Councilwoman. Okay, and I'm sorry so, if I'm not answering your question, but no, I haven't finished this, asking it. Okay, I think my then my I'm sorry question I is: okay. Is judgment is your statement that we do judgment, then we get a recommendation from the from the parish attorney's office? No, ma'am. 
Okay. That's that's what I I was thinking you were you weren't saying. No ma'am. No, ma if, if, if you vote tonight to do an offer of judgment and our office does that and the and the plaintiffs accept that, and I know you read nine seventy and you're a lawyer, I'm not worried about that. And they accept that. It's a final judgment. And in my in my experience, it's a non appealable judgment. In my experience here at this office, our office so, makes a rec let me finish, makes a recommendation on whether y'all should pay a judgment or not. I hadn't even talked to Mr. Dotson about that. I haven't. Okay. So you haven't talked about the recommendation yet because you're saying that we haven't reached that point in this process, correct? What recommendation, Councilwoman? I'm sorry. Your recommendation, you said, I haven't been able to recommend anything because I have not talked to. I'm, I'm not making I'm not making any recommendation. OK, I'm not making any recommendation. Because the words I heard was this is not a settlement. A settlement will require a judgment. Then the judgment no. or, no, no, no. or no. an offer. No, a settlement doesn't require a judgment. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't say think that. you did. I no, didn't, I didn't say did. that. So when I asked what the first question. The, the agenda item is for an offer of judgment. It's not for a settlement. I, I'm we, listening to you. Yes, ma'am. So that's why my first question was, are you saying that in order for you to do a recommendation, which has not been done, that you needed a judgment? You told me no. No. You okay. could do it two different ways. If if we do it both ways, we recommend settlements to y'all and we recommend payments of judgments to y'all. We do both. That's I, th I you, thought you did recommendations a couple of different ways. But your statement correct. and the statement of the parish attorney's office is that we haven't even, we're not doing any recommendation because we haven't had, what, the ability to do it or we just felt that we would proceed and try. I'm not sure what you are. You asking what my recommendation is as a parish attorney member, a person that works for the parish attorney's office, the person who handles litigation. Well, I haven't handled this case. Mr. Dotson's handled it. It's not okay. a case. Thank I've you. Handled. Thank you, Greg. All Anderson right. Dotson, can you get back on? You there, Andy? Yes, ma'am. I'm here. Yes, sir. OK, so. The, the the lead person for litigation says he has not handled this case at all. Only you have handled this case. That's correct. So me me and Courtney Humphrey. The, and Courtney Humphrey, what has been the gap in providing a recommendation? I'm just going to call it a gap. What has been the issue with providing a recommendation? I know you... Well, Council, I, I think I know what you're asking, so I, I'll answer in this manner. Uh, the first notice that we got that this matter is even being put on the agenda is from looking at it on the agenda. No one came to my office and asked me, Mr. Dodson, we're, we're considering doing this. Do you think that is feasible? Do we have a basis for doing it? Is this something that will work? Uh, what's the best way for us to accomplish it? Not one person came and asked me that or, or asked the pathway or how could it occur. Uh, I didn't suggest the offer of judgment. That's something that uh, I suspect Mr. Loop and, and uh, Councilman Loop and Councilwoman Banks came up with, but I had no say in that. Uh, so I, I had, you know, that's the disconnect. If, if that's the question you're asking, Councilwoman Green. Yeah, that's I just, because I know Councilwoman that there were Green. meetings you want that your, were had. You want your well, additional time? I'm sorry. Yes, your sir. Time. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, my, I couldn't hear. I'm sorry. That. Um, I know that there were uh, conversations that were had between the parish attorneys and the council members, and like, like everybody's saying, it's been going on yes. a long time, and so everybody can't say that no, no one has talked to or attempted to talk to. I think at this point, it was the council member or where's the parish attorney's office, there needed to be some statement. And I guess what I was gathering at first was that there couldn't be a recommendation, um, but it was more so there has not been a recommendation. Not that there couldn't be, it just has not been a recommendation for a settlement at this point, right? A formal recommendation. That's 100 percent correct. Yes, ma'am. We did. And, and let me say this to you. You're correct. We did a, a, a lot of work, Courtney and myself, in trying to reach out to individual council members, as you know, because we reached out to you as well as 
each of the council members, trying to gauge their interest in settlement, trying to come to a consensus number that we could work with to try and get this matter settled. We, you know, in our plan in February leading into the beginning of COVID was to do our best to get this resolved with the consensus of the council, but that was thwarted by COVID. And then the next thing we know that this new matter came across. Okay. And so then the questions about, is it a settlement? Are we at the stage of settlement? You just used the term settlement. Whatever the term is, I think what needs to happen is that there needs to be a resolve. And so though we're all trying to go back and forth on, is it the proper time in the litigation to have, you can settle anytime you want. You can mediate anytime you want on any case, That's correct. whether it's directed by a judge or directed by the attorneys themselves. That's so, correct. So we're past that point. And, and I don't want council members to get distracted because we're we're using terms that seem like legalese that we can't now make a layman's decision to make a make a vote. And the vote has already been called for. And so I think we owe it to our, our city to just make a affirmative statement, whether you believe it would have a different result in trial. There are many things that are presented to us from personal injury cases all, all the way until, you know, uh, police brutality cases that are recommended to settle. And so I think that that's where we are right now, and we don't need to get caught up. We just need to make a decision, and that's all I need to say. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Council members, any other comments? I'll take my, my second five minutes. Okie dokie. Go ahead. So questions to, I guess it would be to Andy, the cost to date, uh, how much money has the council spent to date? Uh, how much could we potentially pay if we go to trial? What's been the cost of money, the amount of money that's been uh, used to defend the officers in this situation? How much money was spent on police overtime during the situation? Uh, I know that's a lot. I don't know if you have answers to that tonight, but if, if we, if we um, and we've all had conversations with the parents attorney's office, we've all met, we've all had conversations, we all were asked the question about uh, what we could potentially do to settle or, or authorize a judgment, whatever you want to call it. And we would be saying the same, we may be using the wrong terminology, but I think we're all at the same point in terms of reaching some kind of an agreement to resolve this case uh, this afternoon. Uh, if, the, if it's uh, on the council agenda, then that means that we have the authority to vote on it. You know, there, otherwise it wouldn't be on the agenda as an agenda item if we did not have that authority. So, you know, Andy, if you can give an idea on the cost, uh, if we potentially would go to trial and this was appeal, what are we looking at versus what we're offering? Then we're, we're, we're got, we have this $5 million, million dollar amount on the agenda. We don't know if that's even going to be something that's accepted or rejected or if this will still end up going to trial. So I, I feel like we, we got to start somewhere with this. We've been talking about it, talking about it, kicking the can down the road. COVID came, so now we use that as a reason not to... Uh, but Andy, if you could kind of give me a quick answer. And very, very, very quickly, the only hardcore number I can give you is the amount of money that we spent to date on the outside council, the conflict council. And to date, between the council for Mr. Salamone and Mr. Lake, we spent a total of $179,102.01. And, and if I had to estimate for their preparation to and through trial only, it would be upwards of two hundred to possibly two hundred fifty thousand dollars combined that we will pay them to get through trial and that excludes any cost of appeal. Okay, and so what about the money that we have spent? Not, and, not and, and, and let me be clear, I'm sorry, Councilman, that's 250 additional, not another, not 250 uh, from 179, that's 179 plus an additional 250. Okay, so we're talking about 500,000 or close to 500. Okay. Esti that's estimated prior to appeal. Okay, and so what have we spent um, with the uh, two officers. That's the two officers. Yes, ma'am. That's what I meant. Okay. So how much have we spent on this case with the Austin Sterling case? On this case alone, again, we spent 179, over a little bit over 179,000 on the two officers. On the two officers. But what yeah, about the case? Okay. So yeah, the case itself, I can't really give you that's filing fees. That's experts. And we have spent some money in kind of looking at that and things of that nature. I just don't have that number in front of me. But I, I did get the uh, hardcore calls for the conflict defense for you. Okay. So 
So we're talking about $500,000. And then if it appeals, we can still be talking about another excessive amount of money. Correct. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And I don't know how much money we spent in police overtime after this happened with riots and everything that was going on. But I know that this has cost this city a great deal of money already. It potentially could cost it more. The other thing, we, we settle with police officers on this calendar all day, every day, uh, in amounts. I can't, I don't remember what the largest amount is or was. But we spend hundreds of thousands of dollars settling police cases with car accidents, um, and lots of other things involving city police. And I've never one time heard a question about uh, why are we paying this or does anybody make any objection? They're on the agenda and they just ask uh, however much it is. Uh, so, you know, I, I can't see us continuing to push this out. I don't want to see it go to court. I, I'm praying that we can come to some kind of a resolution tonight to resolve this, to make something, a settlement, offer, a judgment, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and try to move beyond this. I, I think it's incumbent upon us to do it, to do it now. Um, and I would like to see it happen before I leave the council. So that's my, my two cents and probably maybe the my last five minutes. So thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Councilwoman Amoroso, would you like this? Yeah, I do. Um, and I'm not sure if I can ask this question and even have it answered. Um, Andy, how did the five million? How did we come up with the five million judgment? Five million dollar judgment. Councilwoman, I, yes, ma'am. As I was telling Councilwoman Green, I had no idea you'd have to ask Councilwoman Bakes and Councilman Loop. I had nothing to do with that. Um, okay. Well, what I'm, I know this is a a, a tough thing to face. Um, I, I always thought, Andy, that judgments and settlements and those kinds of things were decided upon, uh, what is it, possible future earnings, that kind of thing? That's part of it. Yes, ma'am, that could always be part of it. That's correct. Okay. All right. Well, I think to put $5 million on the back of our constituents, our citizens in East Baton Rouge parishes, it's just too much. Just listening to what uh, the people were saying and all, I just, I can't, I can't support it. All right, Councilman Watson, did you want to speak? Councilman Greg, Watson. Greg Rome, are you on the line? Yes, sir. Greg, uh, for the benefit of everyone who's tuning in right now and watching, uh, uh, your role in the parish attorney's office. I'm under the impression that you handle litigation. Could you tell me exactly what the title of your role is and what, other than this case, obviously, what are you normally expected to do in your role with the parish attorney's office? My title is the director of risk management and litigation. And what, uh, all what the, that, all that title would, would put you in a position to do what specifically? Well, it's from a litigation standpoint, all the litigation goes through me. So if the city sued, the lawsuit comes to me. Generally, I assign it. But Mr. Dotson is included on all of those emails. I don't, you know, there, and there are times when I call him and I, I say, hey, why don't you coach me up on this? This is what I'm thinking. And about 100 percent of the time, he says, I think you're right on that, but you ought to consider this. Sometimes he'll look at a case and say, I would like this lawyer to handle this because of this reason, and I assign it to that lawyer. I do handle some litigation cases. My role is more administrative now, but I do, you know, I serve you say now, for Greg, let me interrupt you just because yeah. for brevity. Uh, you say your role is more administrative now, given the fact that it wasn't before. When did that change and, and what caused that change to happen? Well, sort of towards the end of Miss Batson's tenure, I did more of helping the lawyers with the cases rather than handle an inventory of files. But now, occasionally, Mr. Dotson asked me to handle an individual file. I still do handle I handle all the workers' compensation claims for the city and all the workers' compensation litigation personally, but he still occasionally asked me to handle a file. He did not ask me to handle this one. He asked me, at the time, he and Mr. Nightshed were handling this one. 
and I was to handle the library litigation, which I still am, even though there's outside counsel. But Mr. Dotson is now handling and has handled out the Sterling case, which is not a problem well, for me. With Tedrick gone. I guess, Councilman, where, where are we going with this? I mean, I was, I mean, I was just about a, to say point of Is this about job descriptions? I mean, we're we asking job descriptions or what, what we trying to, We had a lot I mean, of questions. It's about the settlement. And we're trying to move on, move along. I the impression it's not a settlement, it's a judgment. Well, a judgment offer, but where are we going with the job descriptions? I mean, I don't understand in job. Okay, I'll get to it right now. Greg? Yes, sir. Is there a reason why you're not included in this case? Uh, it's, it was a decision by Mr. Dotson. I mean, if he asked me to help, I'm going to help. Yeah. Then let me let me ask Andy. Andy, why is Greg Rome, who outside of of Tedrick Knight said, uh, people who have a lot of experience in litigation, why is why has Greg not been brought in to to help out uh, in the absence of Tedrick? Councilman, typically, I don't. Order, like, I'm still struggling to see the, how this is. Driving. I'm I'm point of order. Matt, no, I, Matt, I think Matt, I think we're really we're getting way off. I mean, if you got something you want to say about the five million dollar right. offer of I'll, judgment, I'll, 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 cut the, I'll cut to that then. I'll cut to that then. I think the fairest thing is a fair trial. I think having the best of okay. the attorney we've got involved would be the best thing for us going forward. I think there's still a lot of questions as Councilwoman Rocca brought up earlier. And I hope that, you know, we can get a lot of that information brought out by a fair trial that the judicial branch is, is designated for in the constitution. So I'm, I'm not going to vote for a settlement of $5 million when I still have questions. It's obvious I'm not the only one who has questions about process or about, you know, what indeed is the correct path forward for us uh, in with respect to this particular item. So I, I can't support the $5 million uh, offer of judgment that's the, as the item reads, because I would like to see this go to a fair trial. And I'm done. Okay. Uh, Council Pro Tem, I, I, I would like to answer that, that one question if I can, please. If you would like to, Andy, you're more than welcome. Yeah, and, and I'm just going to simply answer the question as to why Mr. Rome is not on this case. And it's a very simple answer. Mr. Rome voluntarily withdrew from this case. And I asked him to stay on, and he still voluntarily withdrew from this case. Okay. All right, Andy, let's, uh, let's see if we can just move on because we're getting into some other areas, and that's sidebar stuff. Uh, okay, I understand, and I apologize. I just want to no, answer I that question. I appreciate it. All right, council members, any other comments on item 91? Yeah, one one last comment, Mr. Mr. Pro Tem. Go ahead, uh, Councilman Cole. You got there the was a question asked where uh, did the five million dollar number come from? And, and I guess my question to uh anyone in the parish attorney's office, um, without breaking any privilege of any kind, was there a number suggested to us by any attorney? Andy. Yes, sir. There, there was not a consensus number yet. That's where we were working towards when COVID hit, uh, Councilman uh, Cole. Uh, but as you know, we've had discussions with individuals as to where they were in terms of a possible settlement, each individual council member. Thank you, sir. I think um, I want to approach this from a, a different perspective, Scott, just from the, from, from the comments that were made relative to what what is old to him or his family or what perhaps is not old to him or his family. Uh, I was having a conversation recently with someone who hadn't visited North Baton Rouge in a long time. Uh, I know many of us work in North Baton Rouge, uh, and so we visited every day, and we recognize some of the systemic ills that exist uh, in North Baton Rouge, particularly in certain communities of color. And so when we think about what people are having to deal with and have had to deal with for centuries uh, in this country, in this city, we have to consider that some families are simply doing the absolute best they can with what has been provided for them. We have a fractured school system in the city. We have a fractured economic system in the city where many people of color earn less, way less than other races in the city. We have a fractured community in terms of what we have been taught as a community. And so therefore what we are able to do in this city. So when you think about all of those things and you take that into consideration, there's no reason 
why a man doing the very best he can with what he had provided by this city, given to him by this city to be killed in any capacity. I don't care if he was breaking a crime. I don't care if he was doing anything wrong. We see time and time again in the city of Baton Rouge, individuals break the law and they are not killed. And for that reason alone, we should take some responsibility for what happened to Alton Sterling. And we should definitely take responsibility to ensure that this doesn't have to happen to his children and that they grow up with a different opportunity than he had. And so with that being said, that's the only thing I wanted to add to the comments. Thank you. Yes, sir. Council members, any other discussion? If not, we got a motion to approve item 91 by Cole, second by Banks, and we will do a roll call vote. Ashley? Council members, the motion on the floor is a motion to approve item 91. Please vote yes or no. Welch? Nay. No. Banks? Yes. Loop? Absent. Wilson? No. No. Green? Yes. yes. Collins Lewis? Ms. Collins Lewis? I said yes. Yes. Mr. Cole? Can I vote twice? <laughs> no, sir. Yes. Yes. Ms. Amorosa? No. No. Mr. Hudson? No. No. Ms. Wicker? Yes. Yes. Mr. Watson? No. No. Ms. Rocca? Please show me as it's standing. Uh, you have five in favor, five opposed, and two, uh, one absent, one abstain. Councilman Resign. Chandler said he's trying to say yes. He just texted me and told me he's trying to say yes. Councilman, he's not on the he's not on the call. He's not in. Yeah, he's trying to get in. He's trying. Mr. Loop. Mr. Loop. Yes, yes. 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 Thank you. You have six yes, five yes, and one abstain. Okay, Councilman, item 91. It dies. It hasn't been approved. Go to item 92. A resolution authorizing execution and delivery of local services agreement.